You're already familiar with my coal-fired Russell of Welsh Highland fame. It's nearing completion, but there are still a few parts to build and a few to modify. So this is the live steam pipe running in from the boiler, supplying steam to the two cylinders here. This pipe poses a bit of a problem. It has to thread through the cladding, so I decided to cut it and make a new connection to ease its assembly. So I've cut it here, taking a risk uh, with uh, getting the, um, the wrenches or spanners onto the uh, nuts that are right underneath the boiler and between the boiler and the bogey. So I have a fitting here, which I'm going to silver solder. This is the cross piece that goes that feeds the steam into the cylinders on either side of the frames. This is going to have a compression fitting put onto it. This main steam pipe that comes down from the lubricator you see it here, that attaches to the lubricator, the main steam pipe. I'm going to, first of all, you must remember to do this for your braze, is put the, uh, the nut on. And then the olive on the end of the pipe here. And the joint you can see on this uh, T-piece has already been silver soldered. Now, I didn't aim to put this new joint in. It's a little bit close. Would have been nice to have done the two at the same time. But anyway, I'm going to do this other, this new joint with a lower temperature silver solder so it won't affect this existing joint here. I'm using a low, what I call a low temperature silver solder. It, its um, melting point is 1125 degrees Fahrenheit. It just gives me a possibility of not melting other joints while I'm silver soldering this joint. So I'm using a servet propane torch here. What I do is I heat the job up first. I've cleaned the parts in an acid pickle, but I don't pre-flux them. What I do is I preheat the part and at the same time heat up the silver solder rod then dip the rod into the flux. Then when I touch the hot part, the flux and the silver solder flow together to make the joint. This prevents the flux being blown off the job during the preheat, which sometimes happens. That's the joint done. It's always a good thing to burn off the gas that's left in the tube. So turn your propane off at the bottle and then open up the torch. Getting rid of the excess propane in the system. It's a good thing to do this at the end of the day when you finish using the torch. Reassembling the, um, the pieces you've just seen me brazing, which is the cross piece, I pulled the cylinder steam chest back so that I can get it on here. It slips on like that. You can see the um, slide valve there. These are roundhouse cylinders, been just modified with putting more screws in the end cover. Here, it has an o ring in the bottom there. Put a little bit of oil to help the o ring. Been careful that I don't disturb the timing or the, uh, the positioning of this valve gear because that's all timed up properly. Right, two sides are in. That's looking good. I'm going to put the top covers back on again. Just put a little bit of oil around the top here to help the O-ring seat. This is cylinder oil by the way. If I open the oil can it to help. Like that. Just a little bit. Place the O-ring back in. I really like the way these uh, cylinders seal. I think it's very... Um, it's, it's a better, much better design than um, having a gasket on there o-ring seal a lot better, a little uh, less problematical. The uh, screws unfortunately are slotted screws. I may have to put a little cover over the top of it. Just one cover on. I'll just need to um, tighten these nuts up. They only really need to be hand tied because they're going against a an o-ring. Have to be careful I don't cross the thread. 
there's a point at which you really don't want to strain things too much, especially across thread on these very fine threads on the steam lines. It'll just cause you cause me too much of a headache. I'm hoping that this fitting here, which is the main steam line attached to it, I know it'll solve the problem of it being tucked underneath the um, the cladding on the boiler. It comes out here, comes out here, goes down to the cylinders there, goes underneath the cladding on the boiler and out here. Now before I'd have to assemble the whole boiler and the cladding in there and th carefully thread all this through when it was attached there permanently. And the reason I tried that out was because this is also very tight here once the boiler's in place to actually get at that nut. This is looking quite nice here. I just hope I've got enough room to get my spanners onto it when we get to the point of putting that together permanently.